bust out the audio on my end. There we go. <laughs> you did start it. Yay. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you had any topics uh, to, that you were burning to talk about, but... Uh, okay, well, <clears throat> I know I know the main uh, topic of the episode is just like a whole thing about animals, but before we started that, I wanted to uh, just tease that in the beginning. Yeah, okay. Uh, I just want, there's a random thing I wanted to talk about and it seemed like a way to go about it and the random ramblings. Okay. Um, I went to the dentist like you know a couple days ago, right? To get a couple feelings in, mm-hmm. and so like as I'm waiting there uh, for the dude to come up, I got bored. I was like, okay, well, how does uh, how does the because they numbed up like the part that they were gonna fill in. I was and I was, you know I was like, oh, how does this work, right? So like I started googling around with him, and then when the dude came in later, like I told him about it, and he's like, oh, well, what'd you learn? And then like we talked about it a little bit, so the website was correct on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, the idea was that uh, whatever like stuff they use for it, <clears throat> it uh, okay. So like, like I guess the easiest way to explain it is how to explain the uh, pain receptor thing. It's so, like the pain receptor thing. Uh, the the way the pain gets sent as a signal up to your brain is that uh, for some reason, as you're experiencing this uh, sensation of pain, sodium is formed. Yeah, and sodium like uh, binds onto the, like the 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 signal. And when there's enough sodium, then it releases like back up to your brain, like to or the signal does, and it's like, hey, you know, you're feeling pain, right? Okay, okay. And so what the numbing uh, stuff does, the chemicals, is they stop the, they stop the sodium from binding. Okay. And that's why you're not able to like feel like, huh? Whatever. And then as your your mouth is slowly breaking it down because it breaks down, you know, like foreign chemicals. And so you know, like in a few hours, or you know, it depends on how long the chemical lasts, but. This is just a random, like, just a random aside. But does that mean that if you're severely sodium deficient, then it could somehow numb your pain, or would you have kind of fatal complications before uh, that point? I guess. See, I have to wonder, um, in what way, like, because the thing is, if you have, is that like less sodium in the body, or does the body do, like? I'd have to look into like the process of like how your body makes sodium to begin with yeah like that um i assume it's just ingested in food right oh you mean like the actual chemical processes yeah yeah Mm, i don't know because uh yeah so uh, that's just uh that's what i was that was my random ramble on that was uh i thought that part was interesting it's uh i I was kind of wondering like how that related to uh there was another like there's another random like kind of thing that i'm uh vaguely into in mm-hmm. terms of like because there's not a whole lot of studies on it the idea of like peppers like uh capsaicin which is like the chemical in like uh like chili peppers oh uh-huh. okay yeah. yeah you you feel pain from that because it binds to your tongue it binds to a certain receptor it's like called t1r1 or something like it, it's a very it's a very specific receptor in your tongue yeah that it binds to, and it gives that feeling of like it, oh it's on fire right and that's why if, if uh you feel pain uh, and we seem to be the only animal that like eats the thing for pleasure. Us and uh, there's like one other one, like one really obscure one is like a. Let me let me look it up. I think it's like a, it's some sort of type of like chipmunk or some shit. Oh, interesting. Uh, because most of them, like most animals, are like okay, this hurts, like, but you know. What, well, what what's the chipmunk's motivation? Pretty sure that's what it was. Okay, so tree. Yeah. So why do tree shoes? A tree shooter, a tree shrew, tree shrew. Okay. Um, uh, Smithsonian says that they don't feel the burn. Oh, okay. So you know what it is? It's, it's a, I don't think they have that receptor in their mouth. Oh, but they're the only one that doesn't. So a bunch of birds don't either. Yeah. Right, and that makes sense because like the birds, like if they stick their beak in the in the uh, in the uh, the food, and you know, they get to the seeds. They're eating the seeds and then like you know they go fly off somewhere and then they poop out the seeds and then this spread like this helps in terms of like spreading the uh you know the crop like further and further okay okay it's useful that like birds are able to like not have that but uh in terms of mammals it's us and trees trees as far as we know that's interesting huh yes um... really uh what was damn it 
Buzz. You know, we uh, have a we have shrews in our ancestral tree. Oh, nice. Uh, buzz. Let's see oh, it's, buzz oh you know, those are Sonic. All right, so if you're if any of you are upset at that ping noise, uh, blame Sonic in the comments below. Because <laughs> he, he did one of those questions. Like, I don't know, it's like, man, <laughs> I've had that happen in a bunch of episodes. But the problem is, like, I don't want to go through and mute every single damn server, like, every time I'm just trying to... I just assume most people won't ping me. It's <laughs> incorrect. Whoops, whoops, anyway, whoops. Um, the, uh... So, like, with the... Uh, in Cap uh, Capsaicin, it's kind of weird uh, to get back to, like, what what that was about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In that, uh, in in medical like uses, it's used as like a topical cream to actually alleviate pain as well. Um, so, like, would that be like uh, and... like icy hot kind of creams? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Huh. Um. Is it all that stuff? So I'm kind of weird, on, or I'm kind of not weird. <laughs> I'm kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm kind of interested in uh, how that would play into potentially the sodium thing. I'd have to look more into it. Maybe I found a link and now that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't have a strong. Uh, I don't have a strong. Um, what should we call it? Uh, organic chemistry background, so I have no idea. Um, I don't even see sodium on the uh, capsaicin. Um, yeah, it might it might be a different process. Uh, sodium chlor chloride. So I'm looking for some sort of. Uh, alkaline metal i i don't know i'm it's been so long since i've done chemistry and especially right. organic chemistry but i actually i actually kind of want to pick up organic chemistry as a as a hobby <laughs> as soon as i like have time for for more hobbies which now i don't <laughs> right that's fair i remember um what class was it there was like a uh it, it was like a pharmacology class so like the different like um the chemistry like components of like uh drugs and stuff yeah it's just like <laughs> i'm glad i took that class because like i i just like that is not for me at all like, <laughs> I, I just, it's like way too like involved um because you know, i, I kind of knew i didn't want to go to psychiatry which is like what you know step further we can prescribe drugs but like yeah the whole medical side of things, I'm just like, I just check out. I'm like, you know, I need to learn some of it, obviously, because I, I need to know, like, what affects what, but, like, god damn. Like. <laughs> so for psychiatry, you'd have to have organic chemistry and stuff? Uh, well, I mean, you'd have to know, like, a bunch of different, uh, like, ways in which, say, obviously, drugs would affect uh, the body in so terms of pharmacology. Like, like, which path, yeah, pathways and stuff. Hmm. It's like you know how action potentials are inhib inhibited, or yeah. My my use case would be making my own PLA for three D printing. Um, What's a PLA? PLA is actually corn based. Uh, there might be other kinds, but it's a it's a bio uh, plastic. So uh, they extract like, something what? from the corn and turn it into a hard plastic. Like the early corn or like to, like late two thousands corn because there's a big difference between. <laughs> You're talking about the band. <laughs> <laughs> um, early corn definitely no. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, sorry that is, that there's just the <laughs> no. <laughs> for the audience. He's talking about K O R N. Google it, you Zoomers. <laughs> Freak on a leash. <laughs> I don't um, mind them. Yeah, I have this. I have this problem where I want to get every single. I want to pick up every single hobby I can. I want to get into welding. I want to get into woodworking. Right. But we have finite resources and finite time, so that's not happening. Um. That. Oh, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole of virtual worlds, but I kind of do. Yeah. Um, but we were going to talk about animals. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's do the very smooth transition to animals. Speaking uh, speaking of <laughs> speaking of uh... speaking of animals and women. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh God. 
you know if i ever if i ever um do clips for this i should just do a like every a women come with compilation <laughs> just do a women compilation <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway what were you gonna say <laughs> um animals um okay. Yeah, I'll save that for another day. I want to talk about virtual worlds, living in a virtual world, working in a virtual world. Oh, go ahead. All right. Your episode. What, the virtual world one? Yeah. I mean, unless we wanted to talk about animals and then we get bored and we could talk about that. Well, okay, so how about how about uh, we talk a little bit about animals then? Because like, I think I started the uh, episode about, hey, we're going to talk about animals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's do animals. <laughs> let's Maybe, yeah, commit to that <laughs> Freezing. Yeah. Just to, uh, anyway, so like, did you want to get into? Because there was a couple different like su uh, subjects on the animals thing, so maybe we can just go on one of the subjects and then we can come back later for like another one. Uh, so like the subjects I have written down for it, uh, the, you know, the people debate as in like which animals could potentially count for the philosophical idea of like which are people or not. Yep. Uh, just the idea of like eating animals in general, fix on maybe like. Which animals, like maybe like some are better than others. Yep. And of course, PETA, which is always an easy punching bag. So I don't know, we can choose one of those if you want. Yeah, sure. Um. Um. And, oh, and and I want to talk about a, a really exotic sub uh, topic regarding animals as well, and that's called yeah. uplifting. Uplifting. Well, let's start with that because I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Okay, so uplifting is the concept that if we can use brain machine inter interfaces to improve the cognitive capabilities of humans. So like Neuralink and whatever Valve is working on and stuff like that. If someday we can use that to increase our intelligence, like either increase our memory or add more layers of reasoning or something like that, or somehow benefit from AI, um, then what's to say that we couldn't do the same thing with animals and turn chimpanzees into some, some in an animal that has, you know, like a, a sense of self that's, way beyond what it has now and maybe you could even have you know dogs or cats with an intelligence that's higher than what it is now maybe not human intelligence maybe so so like just so augmented uh like brains for animals pretty much yep like turn turn animals into cyborgs so that they're smarter and potentially able to communicate with humans that'd be cool um there's lots of ethical questions there well, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, and we're eventually going to, like, we're kind of hitting that wall in the sense of, like, you know, you'll get, like, a PETA, right, in terms of questioning the ethics of, like, what we're doing now. But it's it's a lot easier to, like, drug that off when it comes to, like, here's dumb animal, right? Yeah. Like, the, the, the closer you put them, like, towards us, it's like, oh, okay, now we, now we really have to actually consider this question. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good question. Um, we, we tend to, like, there tends to be a continuum of, uh, from foods that are, not okay to eat or animals that are not okay to eat to to those that are okay to eat and that yeah. roughly correlates with intelligence the perceived intelligence of the animal so i wonder if yeah. that's like i wonder if that's even a good metric to use um see okay so i think it's fair in the sense of like um i feel like the only thing that makes us any sort of worth of value is the sense that like our sense of self and you know like the ability to manipulate the things around us and such is like very high yeah otherwise it's like then who cares like if someone killed me or not like if i if i don't even know like i exist like what does it matter yeah hmm. I, mean, I don't know maybe that's just i mean part of it too is just like we're looking from our own perspectives it's kind of hard to really get more more of an objective objective view of the whole thing but like you know like if i look at a uh i don't know a cockroach right Mm -hmm. And I mean that's easy just because it's not visually appealing, too. Because people will do that as well. Like, they don't care about the death of an animal as much if it's not visually appealing. Yeah. Like uh, obviously, like bugs being pretty low on the list for most people. Arachnids, yada yada. A reptile, some reptiles. But then you know you'll get up to like, oh here's, here's a bunch of fluffy animals. You know people are like more into that. Mm, yeah. Um. I think one outlier is pigs. They're fairly yeah. smart, but they're very socially acceptable to eat in most cultures. So uh, my guess to that would be that uh, a pig's intelligence probably isn't 
as readily apparent like without studying it yeah i would guess yeah from what i understand they're roughly around the same intelligence as a dog i believe that yeah i i know i know they're one of the smarter ones like i know uh there's a couple of animals dolphins and pigs usually get pretty high up on the list in terms of intelligent animals obviously not you know excluding our own species but uh now, now that I think about it, um, we we basically genetically engineered dogs um, in, a, in a way that's kind of analogous to the topic that I brought up, which was uplifting. Oh, yeah, yeah. You mean, yeah, through selected breeding. Yeah, selected so. breeding, and we select for kind of social um, uh, traits. Uh, that's, yeah, so <laughs> if we want to talk about ethics, we have to... Yeah. I, okay. So, like, I don't know. Selective breeding is a bit kind of a weird. With that, I mean, part of it's like it's already happened, so it's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, I can't go back and fix it, but uh, yeah, it is because because like if you think about like applying that, say to like humans, like that'd be super sketchy. <laughs> like, you know, like yeah, you, you drink a little. Uh, <laughs> like I don't know if it's voluntary. It's one thing, I guess. Yeah. The few. Uh experiments in eugenics weren't well received that's for sure <laughs> yeah, well, yeah that's one way to put it <laughs> um while 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 germany was doing its thing with eugenics uh japan was also doing that um with kind of areas of china that they took over uh leading up to world war ii or during world uh, war ii like they had some really heinous experiments on on humans yeah that wouldn't shock me I just assume like every major country just does terrible things to other people. At one point, yeah. Right? I mean, you know, we hear about a bunch of stuff the CIA does, or at least did, and it's just like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, there, there's so many variables. It's 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 hard to not have that happen. Like you know, yeah. cops are uh, consistently showing that they're they're the only way they operate is you know. Um, escalating and making things worse. Well, in most cases, or at least what you see, I guess the 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 good interactions wouldn't be as 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 um uh, you know uh, publicized. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the cop thing is a bit. Uh, well, I mean, you, you know, I guess we are talking about pigs. <laughs> 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 uh, um. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's did a you tough see, one. Did you see that thing fast, by the way? Not to not to veer off into a completely different subject, but did you see that thing about the uh, the bill, the, the George Floyd bill thing? George Floyd bill. Uh, is that recent? Yeah, like it uh, it passed the House, I think. Uh, George Floyd. Let me take a look here. Yeah, the, the House of Representatives passed the uh, George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. So now it's going to the Senate. So it's like it's not... Uh, like fully passed. What are the outcomes of the bill? Um, so ban chokeholds and uh, taking away qualified immunity. Ooh, okay. Which is like, that's a, that's a, yeah, that's a good one. Huh. Uh, prohibits no knock warrants in federal drug cases. Outlaws racial profiling. Wait, what about warrants? No knock uh, warrants. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Or drug cases, anyway. For, uh, establishes a national registry of police misconduct to be managed by the Department of Justice. And probably like a couple other things. This is just what I'm seeing as I'm looking through uh, some bullet point things on Twitter. Yeah, I've seen so many videos of, of police on a really big power trip where they're just oh, yeah. they're just they're just enjoying the process of, of you know beating someone or yeah, I mean, because there's no oversight, you know, it's like, okay, they got a police union that will, like, at, like if, if there's enough heat, like, what will happen is the person will get, uh, you know, they'll just get transferred to a new department. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to get fired. They're not even going to get demoted, probably. Yeah. It's like, cool. And then you have the courts helping them in the sense of like, oh, well, you know, it wasn't clearly established that you couldn't execute someone's dog on a chain. Yeah. And that's, that's not hyperbole. That's actually one of the cases of qualified immunity there was like a dog like that was on a chain and the police officer stepped forward and like executed the dog shooting him in the head like it was on the chain but like he continued to step forward saying he felt threatened and then he shot the dog and killed wow. it 
and then like it was like well you know it wasn't clearly established at the time that you couldn't just <laughs> you you know you couldn't just pull off a yeah yeah a uh, game. like if, okay cool if a cop shoots my dog like i'm yeah i'm going away for murder <laughs> like that's yeah um whereas like if you, if you were to speaking of shooting dog like i think there's no case about like shooting a police dog or something because hmm. it like it was him or hit like i don't know if it was like shooting them or just like hitting him or something like it was it was hurting the dog right yeah it's like the dog was attacking him but then it's like you still get to charge for something i forget what yeah i'm i'm very very sensitive to uh uh, uh cases of animal abuse now that i'm a pet owner i definitely uh, noticed that uh that transition in my uh state of mind like i didn't like, like i didn't like have positive feelings about animal abuse before but it was not it's not as it was not as visceral viscerally bad as it is now i used to <laughs> leave them now that i have a dog i'm like damn it's kind of rude oh man uh remember what uh live leak like like how every now and then there would be someone that committed some like like there was that woman that uh, put a bunch of puppies in a in a sack and threw them in the river. And, like they were. See, I, I always hear about those type of things, and I just like it's like, I just assume someone else is dealing with that because like I don't like I don't even want to watch the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. I think um, when I was younger, I was <clears throat> by younger I mean like late teens, early twenties. Um, uh, I was I was kind of you know like I had this morbid curiosity, so I'd watch all the you know like shock videos it's like two girls one cup and one guy one jar and all that oh i've definitely seen the two girls one cup i was probably a lot younger than i should have been i, I do still have that morbid sense but it's not mm. or mor morbid curiosity but it's not nearly as strong like like i'm not going to go out of my way for look to look for that stuff that's that's fair uh i knew a kid in high school that was uh that type like oh here like oh dude this is nice this video whatever right yeah like to me like like i get it like I, I, it's not something that i like at all i'm just like eh, like I'm, gore is not my thing at all yeah but uh i could get it you know from a intellectual standpoint of like okay this is like this is interesting to see you know like it's the same type of thing like of uh like oh you know what what about this really obscure computer thing that like nobody else gives a shit about <laughs> like you know what i mean like you're just expanding your knowledge on like something that you you know you're just trying to get more knowledge about i mean that's what the human brain does is there any is there any neurology research on um whether or not um like uh seeing those sorts of events even if they're not kind of immediate to your environment um if seeing those events has any lasting impact on your psyche or mental um, state if um okay so like if uh if we're talking like real stuff like watching an real, isis beheading or something yeah, I'm th I think that uh, I think there's some studies on like that actually desensitizing you to the violence. Mm -hmm. um, and the the reason I'm, I'm I think that's I'm pretty sure that's the case was because like you know like you'd hear obviously about all oh, the video games and the music and the whatever right and like all that was like mostly bullshit. Yeah. Um, but I think in real world cases of actual violence, I think it actually does, like the news and shit. So, oh, so even the news. So so. So is there a difference between seeing something happen in real life versus oh, yeah, seeing okay, something yeah, on the well, screen or, or? Well, yeah, I mean, you'd have different, I mean, for one, I mean, there'd obviously be in the sense that like you'd be experiencing more senses. Yeah. There'd be. Uh, and you don't have a sense of security. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, also you're in the vicinity of like the thing, like you don't have time to process it. Like there's not a barrier of a screen in between. Yeah. Um, you know, so you'd have like, you know, you smell things, you know, you'd, you get the feeling maybe the, like you feel the cold on that night you know you feel the use yeah yeah oh that's maybe yeah yeah close to, you see the like uh, whatever yeah because uh, you you associate senses of smell and taste with certain memories um or, right, right. or at least i do and i think i've read some uh, papers on that i can't say that i have uh, in terms of like the difference between seeing it on seeing it like in the in the news or seeing it in a video versus uh yeah Thing in real life, I, I haven't uh, seen any research. With that. That's not saying it doesn't exist. I imagine it absolutely does. That would be an interesting just, experiment, but probably unethical. Or, um, unethical uh, well, to show people things that might traumatize them. 
Well, I mean, it wouldn't be ethical in the sense of like if you're like, oh, here's an here's an ISIS beheading video, but you could easily make an ethical version of that. Oh, and like lasting memories, like how strong a memory is, if you just did more mundane memories. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, here's a cake. You know, like here's a video of someone baking cake versus like if you're there watching the person bake the cake. Yeah, it's just a random example. I mean, you, you know, there's like a million different ways you could set up a thing like that. Yeah. I wonder if um, having additional senses would uh, make it to where it's easier to learn something. Uh, uh, I wonder, like, 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 for example, like the example that you gave, like watching someone teach you how to make a cake in person versus seeing it on YouTube. I wonder if the sense of smell uh, is a factor in reinforcing the memory uh, or something like that. You know, I think so. And the reason I think so is because we see that in terms of people learning sometimes when it comes to like school, like, They'll be like, oh, you know, I like, you know, not just visual, but also hands on. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you know, note taking, right? Like not just listening to it, but also taking notes as you're listening to it. Yeah. That helps in terms of uh, memory retention. Mm. So what you're saying is uh, YouTube needs smell o vision (laughs) (laughs) Well, to be fair, that helps. That helps in terms of like, uh, it probably helps in terms of like you're trying to reorganize the uh, person's like uh, what they're saying. Yeah into your own words and then into notes themselves because idea because ideally if you're taking notes you're not you shouldn't be taking them down like the exact wording unless you need the exact wording yeah ideally uh, you know shorthanded but uh that might be a different process i will say like i'm not to um hmm. scientific advice here on this podcast just... <laughs> yeah. these are just random ramblings of uh yeah, armchair everything <laughs> I try not to, uh, you know, I try not to represent it as like, this is absolutely, you know, if I say something like, oh, you know, I've seen the study, right, then I'll, I'm usually fairly confident that I've actually seen the same thing. Uh, you know, um, yeah, you know, that I actually know what I'm talking about. But if I'm like, oh, you know, I think it's whatever, then I'm like, eh, maybe, maybe not. I think we're pretty, or we're, we're, I mean, we're not pretty close, but we're getting closer to having uh, the sense of taste and smell in uh, VR. Um, right, right. There's a there's a device that uses vaporizers like vape, um, uh, and they have uh, you know like some sort of solution that resembles certain tastes or smells, and then they just kind of create water vapor like you would with a, with a vaporizer for smoking, and that's somehow well it's localized next to your nose. Um, but I, I, th- I think they ran into complications with actually getting a product out because of the association with vaporizers. Uh, uh, that became a regulations issue. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, there's um, a product that people are working on where you stick a device on your tongue and the device has electrodes on it. And uh, it, it through um, some chemical reaction, it... it uh, simulate smells on your taste buds or not t- smells tastes on your taste buds <laughs> <laughs> yes the well-known uh, taste bud of smell <laughs> but yeah um, i uh, that sounds like it'd be pretty interesting i mean obviously we've seen some precursors of that type of thing of like oh scratch and sniff like this during a movie right <laughs> like i remember the uh, what was it like the wild thornberries movie yeah Having that, you know, a couple other movies and stuff, and it's like, uh, yeah, eventually it has to like reach towards that. And there are a few 4D theaters where they'll have uh, water misted on you and wind yeah. blowing at you and your seat moving yeah, and stuff. Actually, um, have you ever been to Disneyland? Um, is that the one in Florida? Uh, no, I mean, no, it's Disney World. Oh, I've been to the one in Florida. Okay, so I, I don't know if this one exists in Florida. It probably doesn't because there's like California Adventure. Yeah. Which is the one next to Disneyland itself. And uh, in there, they have a Bugs Life uh, theater like experience. And uh, so there's like water mist that comes down from like the top of the thing when uh, when the thing's trying to like spit at you or something. Uh-huh. I think. Uh, and when, when uh, animals are told to leave the uh, room or whatever, right? Yeah. You can feel the uh, animals like scurrying underneath your butt. Oh, wow. Like there's little like because it, it pushes up a little bit. Oh wow! Uh, things and then like for example when when they tell you to, uh, they're like oh you know they're they're trying to spray you with bug spray and so like a mist comes out of the screen, because uh, it's just like a giant theater. Yeah. 
And then, you know, when you're attacked by the bees or wasps or whatever they are, you can feel like the sting because there's like things in the back mm-hmm. of the seats and they like poke out just slightly. Yeah, that's... And so it feels like it feels like a, you know, like a sting, like not like obviously it doesn't hurt, but it's just the fact that it's like a sudden jolt. You know, if it's very, it's like, oh, but... <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 def- that's definitely a gimmick um, format for movies, but but I really yeah. love the concept. Right, right. Yeah, I, th- I think yeah. Eventually, they're gonna they're gonna move it more towards, especially because we know, uh, you know, uh, they do it in certain stores too. I don't know if you. I'm sure you probably noticed. Like you'll you'll go into actually Disney does it too when you walk down the main street and they have pumping in certain smells and stuff. It um, makes you more likely to buy things or something. Oh yeah, and and I'm sure I'm sure a lot of shops do that, like uh, Bed Bath and Beyond or something. Yeah, yeah. They've got so some like, amazing candles. So I feel like with those people doing it, they're, you know, like that technology is definitely on its way to working out. Because, you know, like absolutely a bunch of people would be willing to buy it like a video game. If it's like, here's like the smell, you know. Uh, you watch H3H3, right? Uh, no, not like anymore. Oh, okay. Like, I've, I've seen a few of his podcasts like years ago, but uh, I fell off pretty quickly. Well, um, Gwyneth Paltrow came out with that candle called The Smells Like My Vagina. Oh, Remember yeah, that yeah. One? And, uh, and um, H3H3 made a version called This Smells Like My Butthole. <laughs> and, and, and he was talking about how it was sourced. There's this company that just makes these artificial um, uh, uh, smells uh, for kind of these entertainment events, like 4D theaters and stuff. Yeah. And so they, they hired them to make a, a smell that strongly resembles ass. <laughs> Nice. And then uh, uh, Charlie, uh, uh, Moist Critical, yeah. um, reviewed it. Uh, he reviewed the yeah, candle. I remember that review. Um, I remember he's trying to, like, currently he's trying to get people to do, like, molds, like chocolate molds. Of- <laughs> 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 yeah, so it's fun. Oh, man. I-, I love all the stuff that he gets away with. <laughs> like, he put the two yeah. giant... Um, uh, the giant dildos he put both of those in his screen, uh, thumbnail for his youtube video and i don't think it was taken down maybe it was age gated but yeah he's got all the sex toy videos right and he's actually talked to the the balls with uh the wojski or whatever her name is susan wojski uh, yeah 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 the ceo so, did that so that's uh so it's not like they don't know about him <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's, yeah, he's definitely um, up there as far as creators go. I mean, it is it is nice to see like stuff like that. Still, uh, it does give me hope that they kind of like been lessening up on the whole uh, like super like you can't you know you can't do the swear thing and you can't do anything sexual and you you know like yeah. This is just my opinion, I, but I, I I think um I think the part of the challenge is like um. You often have two opposing groups that hate each other's guts, and it's hard to please both both of those groups. So, like, like there's you know SJWs that, well, that's a, that's kind of a dated term, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah. uh, I, like I, I, well, you got you got you got the Puritans, and then you got the people that are like super like do everything ever. Like, yeah, I'm fairly left wing, and and um, and I'm very liberal about some of my beliefs but at the same time i think there is a point where you take it too far um like uh like i don't know like for example maybe canceling milk because uh most most non-white people are lactose intolerant or something like that right um i think there are extremes like like peta like peta peta is an extreme example of someone that cares about animals right you know to be honest i almost feel like they don't i almost feel like it's a whole like scam that they don't i think i'm not i'm not 100 on that train but like i'm part way on that train well like i I dipped my toe in that water (laughs) well i guess now we're back on topic but um maybe maybe they're just um like this is something that that they think about a lot, and I think the more I think about animal ethics and stuff, the more I think I should start moving towards veganism. Um, but I don't know. I'm I'm still conflicted on that. But I think I think since that's what they do, um, they promote veganism and they promote, uh, you know, 
I, I don't know. I think I think they're anti-pets, like anti-dogs and cats for pets, which I take issue with because I, right. I don't know. I I feel like I feel like at this point, um, pets are an extension of humanity. Like we spent tens of thousands of years genetically engineering them through selective breeding, so they're well, I mean it's, they're they're part of humanity now, in my opinion. I, I feel like it's like you can't just be like, oh, you know, like if you're treating your pets well, like I don't see a problem in. Yeah, like, I don't see what sort of moral objection you could really stand on. I, I just think, um, and this applies at pretty much every level. I think if you have a disagreement with a person, um, then you can either, yeah. well, yeah, you, you could either you could either um, say, you know, that's a person that I won't associate with. I, you know, I'm going to block them. Uh, you know, they're they're evil. Uh, that's one way to look at it, and another way to look at it is, you know, you have to. You have to think of the bigger picture, the thing that we all have in common. So, like, humans have common ancestry. Uh, you know, the evolutionary chain goes back to where, uh, you know, we have common DNA with a frog or something. So, like, yeah. the way I look at it, um, as far as humans' place on Earth, um, is we're the ones that evolved to the point where um, we're, uh, we're representatives of the planet. Maybe we're. I don't think we're doing a really great job of representing the planet right now, but no. um, but but I do think that um, we're all in this together, meaning us as humans and the rest of the animal kingdom, um, and you know plants as well. Like we're all things that independently evolved over time. Like it, if that's the theory that you subscribe to, um, it could go even farther back if you believe in panspermia or or believe that it's a plausible hypothesis. But like we're all we all have common ancestry and and I, I feel like human versus animal will get blurry or over time and this is starting to sound like me trying to come out as furry or something, but no, that's not what it is. You, you, know, you get what I'm saying? I'm, like like uh yeah. like animals and humans are the same organism. Like we're all we all have a common ancestor, so we're all the same organism. We just a diverge fox, to where we can't fox, breed. <laughs> like, that's what the problem is. <laughs> I don't know. No, that's fair. I mean, you there's know, a bit of rant <laughs> together, so that's fair. But that, that's why I disagree with um, Peta's views on on having not having pets, because I feel like pets are an extension of humanity. So that was that was the long <laughs> the long version right. of that. That's all good. But I, I do think I do think that there's there may be some merit um to what what they're trying to get at. I, I think they're um I think they're trying to uh get us to where we need to be faster than we're probably able to tolerate. So I think eventually it won't make sense to um you know slaughter animals whenever we can just grow the meat in the lab or create a good yeah. plant based alternative. And the problem I have with that is like if they were just doing more stuff like that, like I, you know, like it'd be pretty reasonable. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, like we shouldn't be eating them because like whatever, right? Like this is uh, this is harming them, and this is uh, you know we're working on vegan stuff. You can do it. Like obviously it's not viable for everyone. Yeah. But yeah, but, like we're working on it. I I think but, um like I feel like that would work out well. But the problem is then you get like every little dumbass marketing stunt they ever, you know, like. <laughs> Well, Pokemon, like you can't because it's teaching kids that you know battling animals is cool. And here we made a version of Pokemon where it's like they all, uh, you know, that they're all like really beaten up. And every time you make it to the end of a fight, you uh, you get like a fucked up video of like a real animal being tortured. It's like, yay! It's like cool. And I wonder if they just do this for for um for relevance, like. Like well, half of their posts are just to, there to make people horny. Like, like when they sexualized a cow. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, uh, I just feel like there's a lot of. Uh, I just don't like, at least in terms of like the PETA corporate side. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of people in the organization that do believe in that mission. But in terms of like the corporate side of things, like, I just don't think. Uh, I feel like a lot of them are. Uh, um, they're not not genuine it doesn't come from a genuine like i don't know or it comes from like a really really warped place of like because the idea of like for example you know like oh you know we don't have like we don't want there to be any pet ownership it's like okay i can kind of like i could see the argument if it's just like letting them live in the wild but then their their option is like no we're gonna like that one time when they kidnapped that pet 
and they like killed him. Yeah. It's like, okay, cool. And you know, and it's not even like, you know, like obviously that's like a one-off thing. So it's not like, oh, well they just do that all the time. But I mean, they do kill quite a lot of pets. Yeah. They kill thousands of pets a year. It's it, like, I think it's like, what was it last, last year. It was like 60% of the pets they got in that, that one shelter. That's just one shelter, right? Cause yeah. there's a lot more shelters, but, uh, um, at one point it was as high as 90, like five, 96%. And it's like, dude, like, because their idea is like, oh, you know, because we take in any animal, right? So there's, you know, so animal will come in all like mangled up. You know, we're trying to end its suffering, but it's like sixty percent. Like, there's no, there's no way, especially when you look at other uh, shelters that have that same policy. If we'll take anything, yeah, they're nowhere near that. Uh, they're nowhere near that like kill rate. Yeah, yeah. And then they'll be like, you know, you, you'll mention that obviously on Twitter, like it's just some intern doing it, whatever, right? Yeah. You mentioned it, it'll be like, oh, you, you guys pee to euthanize this. Here's why. And then it's like, they always link back to their own website. Like, you just link back to yourself. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Like, you know, it's cool we murder things because here's our link to our own website. Like, cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess there's some cognitive dissonance going on there because they're in this catch 22 situation where either they. E- Either they kill off the the animals in their shelters because they can't afford to keep them alive, um, or they do this massive promotion where they they give away, you know, animals to a to a, a home that wants them or something, like that. That would be the 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 right thing to do in my opinion. Yeah, but, or like but they transfer to other shelters. Yeah, yeah. They, they transfer some to other shelters, not like a whole lot, but they transfer some. It's um, like oh oh, that's a good point. So transfer them to other ones. But if, if that wasn't an option and it was either try find a way to keep them or give them away, like yeah, yeah. to to individuals, like I think because they have a fundamental um, uh, belief that having pets, I, I could be wrong about this assumption that that PETA is no, against pets. No. Okay, so like their one of their main people was like going on about like how pets are like ethical. So okay, yeah, um, yeah. So they're in the catch twenty two where they either have to. You know, kill the pets or, or actually give them away and, and go against what they stand for. So I don't know. I'm not saying that what they did was right. I'm just saying that that's probably the source of the cognitive dissonance. Yeah, it was just like it's nuts, dude. Like I don't like I don't know how you could like. Okay, yeah, there's definitely some. Um, sorry, I just found a funny meme on Twitter. <laughs> but uh, anyway, <clears throat> I'll I'll send it in the chat later. But uh, it's just a weird like. I mean, it is cognitive dissonance, or dissonance. <laughs> Can't even say the word. God. <laughs> dissonance. <sighs> I have a psychology degree. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even speak. Hey, to you me. don't have a spe- oh. speaking degree, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, it's just yeah, it's weird. I don't know, like I don't know how you could possibly say like this is this is suffering when like okay yeah you get some people that like abuse their pets but like the vast majority of people like only treat their pets good some of them like a lot of them especially in our country treat them like their actual family members i wonder like, it's get treated really good for the most part so an- another psychology question i wonder how much um we know about gut feelings because i feel like gut feelings are really useful for these ethical dilemmas like when I was growing up, um, um, like, you know, gay is bad. Transgender is bad. Like that's, that's, that's what was drilled into my head growing up because religious family. Um, but right. then I always have this, this feeling in the back of my head that that's, that just rubbed me the wrong way. Like having that kind of viewpoint. So I wonder if there's, there's something to having kind of like a gut instinct in humans that, that yeah. for ethical dilemmas. No, I, I always get a little uh, sketchy on that because uh, I think I mentioned it before, but the idea of like common sense is like a little uh, so a little dubious. So is common sense like, just a, a like the set of the the most valuable heuristics that you have? I don't know. Like, I, I, see, the problem is common sense like changes per person. Like, what's common sense to one is not common sense to another, right? Yeah. A lot of people like a lot of people like cite common sense, but like there's never like consistent of what common sense is. Like, there's a lot of things you probably get like agree on. Like, for example, like, hey, don't poke a sleeping bear. Yeah. 
most people would be like, hey, that's like that's a decent common sense. But then like more and more you try to talk about certain subjects and more it's like, hey, whatever. Um, in terms of, like, I, know, I, I brought up the one, I think a few episodes ago. Mm-hmm. Sense of, like what would be common sense for like people in like the fifth century, like would be like, oh yeah, well, you know, the earth, the sun orbits around the earth because it looks like, you know, the sun goes up in the sky and then the sun goes down in the sky. So obviously it, it orbits around us. Yeah. But then in actuality, they don't, you know, it doesn't. Is it, uh, because we don't have all the uh, factors at play. So that, that's the problem with common sense is like, it, you know, it works probably well if you know, like, if you have an idea of like what all the factors are that are at play. If you don't, then it's like you're working with an incomplete set of, uh, you know, <clears throat> informa- <clears throat> information. And then it's like, you know, obviously it's pretty prone to failure. Yeah, yeah. You're missing. So. Uh, that, that's a bit of a long winded way to say that, like, I don't know, like, I, I get a little sketchy when it comes to, like, gut feeling type things or common sense in general, like that type of. So these are, these are all just abstractions that we, like, that we came up with um, in our society, right? Yeah, I think it's. In our I think language, it's pretty, rather. Be like, oh, yeah, you know, there's just, just, I just know what I know, right? Yeah. And it's just like. Oh, so that's, yeah, yeah, okay. So that would be a good example of confirmation bias. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I would, I would say so. Okay. But uh, obviously, sometimes it could be right. Like you know, so it's not like. But it's just why I think it's important to like examine. Like okay, what are some actual reasons I can come up with? Like legitimate, practical reasons as to why this is good or bad. Like you have a a set of knowledge that um, helps you make an informed opinion about about a topic. Like, right. You know that bears kill you, or they can yeah, potentially right. you can kill you. Pretty- come up with a pretty convincing reason as to why to not poke a sleeping bear yeah because if it wakes up you know, but you can't really just ask a bear to not like attack you yep like you could ask that but like a bear's not really gonna listen to that and uh you know i, I don't know how often bear attacks like like if you're near a bear like how often does it attack you it might be more sensationalized yeah the same way that a shark would be but like i mean are you gonna take that risk so like, what that's if- not risking your whole life off of so what about the concept of instincts more generally um uh like animal instincts specifically okay well uh, that would be good in the sense of uh that's reaction time so that's all like uh mechanical in a sense if we're talking like because if you're talking about like animal type instincts that's obviously different from in terms of like so be like oh my instincts, i have a great sense of direction right well, like because i'm very, oh yeah yeah well people it, like that. is that something that's right. encoded in dna or is it is it just a manifestation of how the brain is wired? I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not really into the whole evolutionary. Okay. Okay. Side of things, but I will say that it probably is. Uh, I would guess DNA at this point. Yeah. Now, you know, did it start? Did it always start off as DNA, or did it was an environment and then became DNA? I don't know. Because hmm. right, that's usually what happens is like something in the environment is like causing a change dna wise is like oh these these animals you know like the animals with longer beaks uh breed more because they're able to get more food mm-hmm. you know like is that maybe the seeds in these particular fruit are like the food inside this particular fruit it's like further in yeah and so like these animals survive whereas the other ones don't and so now you know it was an environmental thing this is uh now the dna has continued on mm. so I guess in a sense like that like obviously like if you're you know like people that are there's not that many people that are blind these days obviously the default is uh, you're able to see yeah uh probably because it's pretty advantageous to be able to like <laughs> see a threat yep. coming yeah obviously it doesn't matter that much these days at least as much as it did back then like there's a lot more uh ways in which we can supplement that disability it would if if it, if that was the default state though then that would definitely slow down uh, t- technological growth probably well yeah not being able to see what you're doing right so like in turn uh yeah i would i would say some like instincts i mean depending on which ones uh because that's the thing too like it you got to specify like which ones i'm not saying you specifically i'm just saying like if, whichever ones we're talking about like we got to be specific on which ones because yeah. like some of them will be some of them won't because a lot of people will throw like things together that aren't like seem like they match because they give you the same feeling but like that's not actually the same uh, process yeah yeah, yeah. Hmm. um 
Like, it's uh, like I would say anything to do with like, I think thing. Yeah, it's probably not going to fall in that category. Whereas if it's like I react, so more uh, of a physiological you, response. I, I thought that was a spider, right? So I jumped up, but it's it's, it's not it's not necessarily that you th like you just saw something move and you're like, a, yeah. Yeah, and there's different layers of, uh, you know, like visual processing. Um, right. I, I, I fall into this trap a lot where I make these assumptions about biology because because um, uh, a lot of programming is trying to simulate this kind of stuff. And so, like, right. I come I come to this from a programming background, and and things things seemed very obvious to me about how the brain works, but then I end up making the wrong assumptions. Um, you know, like consciousness is something that's that's still people are not very sure about it at all as far as i know yeah, yeah. um and you know there's there's a lot with that but yeah and there's a there's a pretty big gap on our understanding on that mm -hmm. i, I do see it. things kind of picking up speed as far as research that's going on uh, yeah. so that's good to know or at least you can seem to locate it like vaguely you know you can get it like it's in the brain and it's like it's, you know, it's related to certain parts of the brain, but in terms of like what it actually, you know, mm -hmm. like, I mean, well, it gets into the whole like personhood thing. Like in a sense, because it's like, uh, some people might call it soul, but it's like, what makes you you? Yeah. Well, obviously your brain does, I would say, in terms of like what we know now. I think, I think within the next five years, we're going to, have you ever seen the movie Her? Nope. It's a sci-fi movie about um, uh, the near future where they create these conversational AIs that can talk with you and you have a history with them and they have a personality and they express emotion and they talk about really deep concepts. And so that's the premise of the movie. Um, and... It's like Cleverbot, but more advanced. Huh? It's like Cleverbot, but more advanced. Yeah, basically. And... and um, the protagonist forms a, a romantic relationship with the, with the AI. And I think um, like you, we're seeing multiple examples, like GPT three is not necessarily conversational, but it's a language model. That's very, very uh, significantly advanced. Um, yeah. IBM's working on something like there, there's all these companies that are working on conversational AI to where um, you could talk with it and, you might as well be just talking to one of your friends on discord like they they match the they match the 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 writing style uh the punctuation like you could create some really convincing ai i think within the next 5 years and um yeah once we get to that point it's just going to be this continuous uh gradual climb of um of uh us being even more and more convinced that it's possible that that AI is sentient or, you know, self-aware or has a consciousness. Like, I think these concepts are going to blend continuously. Uh, like I'm, I'm starting to see the beginnings of that, but you know, it's still, it's exponential. So we're, if we're at the bottom of the curve, it's still going to take a long time. Well, what was that? Uh, what was that one video? I'm sure you've probably seen the video of like that uh, robot loader thing. And it kept trying to open the door. Um, Boston dynamics. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know the name of it, but yeah. like it looks like almost like a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, a, yeah. But like, I kept like trying to open the door, and the like the person that was running the thing was like kept trying to close it. Yep. And, like it finally escaped or something. Yep. Those robot dogs, those specific ones, are actually on sale right now, or for sale. Um, That'd be weird. They're about sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> like a Roomba is one thing, but I don't know if I'd feel comfortable having some weird <laughs> robot. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, but they're actually out Maybe. there in the wild now. Elon has a few um, for like doing stuff around the factory, and then MKBHD has one or had one for a video. Weird. It, the magic robo animals. We're just gonna get like. Yeah, I I could not see even that. Like a neutron, like Goddard, you know, the dog or whatever, right? But yeah. like cyborg ones too. Like, yeah, and we're already growing true. skin and and. Uh, you know, like fur, maybe. I don't know if we're growing fur, but we're growing skin in a lab. It's like eventually they're just going to be able to put, you know, organic material over a robot or something. 
Dude, the future's gonna be wild. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine being like a 17th century like farmer or something? Like this is like, like oh, I got my. And it and it does seem to you like it's speeding up, right? Technological progress. Oh well, well yeah. I mean that makes sense, right? The, the as you figure out stuff, especially now, like in the age of technology, like in the age of the internet. Yeah, I think the internet started. changed everything. Like that was such a huge boost in everything. See, uh, what is it? The idea of the singularity or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we've talked about in previous videos. Yeah. Uh, um, be sure to check out the other videos. <laughs> we... uh, it's probably the first one, I imagine. Smash subscribe. <laughs> smash that like button. Hit subscribe. Yeah. Um, uh, and like the pandemic also, I think, is going to be a big boost long term. Just the fact that now we're all working at home and we're challenging all our assumptions about mm -hmm. everything. All, all the companies are like, well, we can never accommodate. And then like, okay, well, we actually have to accommodate. All right. Yep. It's like, oh, we could have just done this to begin with. Collaborative tools are so much better now. Like, I think yeah. I think um, video streaming uh, in Discord kind of, well, I, I think it's been in progress for a few years, but they've really accelerated it because it's such a useful feature for people that are separated. Yeah. And it's so easy to video stream on Discord. It's amazing. Like, compared to setting up something for Twitch or YouTube. I've only used it a couple times, but uh, yeah, it seems like it works pretty well. I wonder I wonder if Discord would work on its own as a video platform where instead of uploading videos on, or instead of streaming on Twitch or or YouTube, you just stream on Discord and then someone comes up with a solution to inc improve uh, discoverability either at Discord or some other company. And then you could grow as a, a Discord streamer. I wonder if that's ever going to happen. Be sure to hit that like button. <laughs> you and the Discord streamer. Um, <laughs> wonder. I mean, they gotta have people testing that stuff. I guess. So yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm yeah. I, I'm just really excited about how, um, how much, uh, tools that we have access to has improved. We we can. There's so much we can do. We can do deep fakes. We can do like really complex 3D scenes. I can I can take that girl's <laughs> photo I was attracted to in high school and <laughs> put her on the nude body. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Okay, don't don't do that. By the way, that's uh illegal. Well, yeah, illegal, but like it's also like I feel like it's pretty like, unethical. Why like that's exploitation of someone? So don't do it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um. um uh, where were we? Eating animals. Which animals oh, yeah. could count? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess. What's your take on just eating animals in general? Because mine is the idea of like, okay, I, I understand it, it harms them. Yeah. Ideally, when it comes to like, if they if they die, like I would I would prefer it to be a case of them uh, being killed more humanely. And as much as Peter would be like, there's no way to humanely kill. Like I, I think there's obviously ways that are more humane than others. So obvious. Yeah, I think there's a lot of gray area here. Um, so, um, let's see. So, on on the one hand, um, there's <laughs> well, well, on the one hand, there's um, like there's a continuous gradient from, uh, and here I am making assumptions again, so this might not be correct, but there's kind of a continuous gradient from. Uh, the perceived intelligence of plants to the perceived intelligence of humans. And so, yeah. like, I don't think anyone objects to, uh, you know, cutting leaves or fruits or stems off of a plant and then consuming that as food. Um, so there has to be a point where you draw an arbitrary line and you say everything on the left side of this line right. is okay to eat. Everything on the right side of this line is not okay to eat. Um, if you're right. basing that on intelligence, then you could take an animal that you would say is reasonably intelligent, like a, a pig, and you could um, genetically engineer it or selectively breed it to be not as smart to where it's below that threshold of intelligence that you would consider ethical to eat. So I feel like it's very hard to ignore the fact that this is a continuous thing and the line that we draw is ar arbitrary. You know, uh, I could see a civilization that maybe, maybe, maybe not in the future, but definitely in the past where 
they would have no moral objections to eating other humans. And you could also like you could also uh, follow the chain of events that might happen if Nazi Germany won. Like they could maybe selectively breed humans, um, you know, to be like farm animals, basically. That's a really extreme and really horrible example, but that, right, right. But I mean, like, well, with the, okay, so with the human one in particular, there's like issues in terms of like eating human meat. Uh, I don't know the exact. Uh, oh well, yeah, there's definitely if you eat the brain, then you'll get something similar to mad cow disease. Yeah, yeah. So like, there's a, uh, I guess there's a built-in biological process of like us not doing that, and I would guess that's just the idea of like so that we like it's built in so we can continue the species. That we're not eating each Kurtz other. felt Jakob disease. I don't know the name. I'm, I haven't really looked into it too much. Yeah, uh, I, I can't say that I would. I haven't thought about the idea of trying human meat, but uh, I would. Uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> I thought about it. I, I might try lab-grown human meat <laughs> someday. Uh, just, 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 uh, just you know, just to say I tried it. Well, maybe I wouldn't say that I tried it because that would not be socially acceptable. But uh, you know, uh, <laughs> if it was that, I might, to be honest. Yeah, like lab-grown human meat. Well, someone brought. I, I was watching a video and they brought up a good point. Um, what if, uh, what if we're at a point where, like, uh, we get so good at generalizing lab-grown meat uh, b- between different animals that we can offer lab-grown elephant meat or lab-grown lion meat and have that be a delicacy that people enjoy? Uh, yeah, dude, I, to be honest, I'd be down with it. There's a lot of. Uh, it's like when it comes to animals. Yeah. Like there's there's a lot of animals I, I. Uh, like, I wouldn't go out of my way to try to eat, but, like, if I was offered, I would. Like, for example, dog and cat. Like, I know most people are like, no, I wouldn't do that. Yep. Uh, I'd be willing to try it personally. So what what would you think pers- uh, personally about the idea of taking an animal that we believe is over the threshold of intelligence to where it's not yep. ethical to eat, and we selectively breed it to the point where it's below that threshold? Do you think that would be an ethical way to, <laughs> like, like no, if, like no. if you dumbed down cows enough to where they they have no feelings or no feeling of pain or the problem no is thoughts. Um. Uh, yeah. Okay. So like, I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah. And I don't know how you would legislate against that. Yeah. Like I don't, you know what I mean? Because here's the thing, like, obviously, like, if, like, oh, hey, here's a, here's a cow, uh, here's like a, you know, like a baby cow, what are they called? Oh, veal. Veal, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's probably not the name of the actual baby that's cow. That's baby cow, yeah, yeah, veal, I think. Yeah. The meat, uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, if you were to take a, like, a baby cow and then, like, you inject it with something that, like, kills its brain development. Yeah. That'd, that'd, that'd be easy. That'd be so easy. I don't even know the, the the process behind the brain, but it can't be too hard to fuck it up. Yeah. In terms of like just making it completely like n- not workable. Yep. Like, it, there's no way it wouldn't be that. Like you would just stunt the growth. Well, what... <laughs> you know, the growth gets stunted in terms of like humans and stuff. And I'm not talking about like height growth. I mean like actual like yeah and de- development. Like you know if they're not getting the the stuff that they need, then like it gets stunted. So it wouldn't be too hard to do that. Yeah. You could also. You could also put them in VR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you mentioned something about that in a few episodes ago, I feel like. Um, it, there's a company that's actually been working on this, putting VR headsets <laughs> on cows. I don't know if it was a real thing or if that was a satire. But, uh, but I mean, that would be... Yeah. But but I feel, like, I feel like you take that to its logical extreme and you've got the movie The Matrix. So... The Mootrix. The Mootrix. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> the Mootrix. Wait, no, it's the, um, it's Kung Pao. Remember there was the, uh, there was a Matrix. Uh, oh. Kung Pao with the cow. When he's dodging the udder blasts. Uh, the Mo- Oh yeah, the Mootrix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember now. Oh man. Um. Uh, yeah, it's a tough one like it's like it's conflicting because like that's the type of thing like yeah i, I would want to try like dog and cat less yeah less than that would say like a pig yeah but like i, I there is important like there's an important thing to note too is that i know that a lot of that is social conditioning yeah 
in a sense it's just our group because our culture is like set up that way yep but, like that like that's kind of where i'm like eh, like i don't know whatever right in a sense like you know like i brought up earlier like the bugs right in a sense of, like so i think bugs uh intelligence are pretty low so like it's not really that big of a deal but like people would look at a bug way like worse than they would ever like a, another animal that was like say furry and the same intelligence fluffy or whatever yeah i'm i've got this moral dilemma that i've been trying to work my way through and i'm sure there's a name for the for this so maybe i should just like poke around the philosophy wikipedia page but um if you if you ascribe to the view that um that there's no uh reason that we're alive that we just emerged uh as a phenomenon from the set of conditions that the universe was in or the, that earth was in if you ascribe to that um hypothesis then um then i at least at least the way i look at it um kind of my entire ethical framework breaks down like um and i think this is a criticism that people use against atheists so so um i i think it's generally a false one because because once once that ethical framework breaks down um it's immediately replaced by something like utilitarianism like yeah so as someone who i actually that is my uh that is my thought process that uh that uh you know it's just like we're here pretty much yeah and the the reason that we're here is like pretty irrelevant i guess yeah and uh, the meaning like I, I don't know if you're in buzz server like one of the questions of the one of them posted was like you know question of the day type thing i posted that one meaning of life <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, you did. Okay. Yep. Well, then, uh, then I guess you would know all about the, that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think about um, that a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I feel like it's like it's just meeting whatever you put into it. Like, it's all subjective. But like, see what you find important is important to you. So, like, who cares? Um. But yeah, I mean, you know, in terms of like the, like, hey, we don't like society is useful to me. Yeah. So, like, I don't want society to fall apart. Yep. You know, it's the type of thing of, like, hey, like, yeah, you know, like, you know, what's the moral dilemma against, say, raping people? Well, it's like, okay, well, I don't want to be raped. I don't want my friends and family to be raped. And you don't either. So let's, you and I enter a pact that, hey, we're not going to rape each other. We'll punish people that do rape. And there, you know, and then you do that with a bunch of other things in society. And there you go. Like, it's an easy, like, so I don't have to watch my back in case someone is trying to, like, murder me or steal from me or something, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's very obvious a lot of the like big like moral no nos like it's pretty obvious that we can come up with a thing. Um, do you like a like a practicality of why like we're not going to do this? Do you do you think any act that um that you commit in VR should be illegal? Um, okay, <sighs> only only one uh, grooming kids. What grooming kids? Grooming, grooming kits. Yeah, grooming. Kids. Oh, grooming kids. Oh, oh no, no. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me, let me uh, make that more specific. Any single player activity. Oh no, no, no. Whatever. It's fine. It's all good. So if you yeah. if you could create a, a like a, a simulation that's even more real than real life, um, which is what Valve is claiming that they're going to do. Um, do you think like it would it should be fine for someone to just uh, simulate going on a, a murderous rampage? uh yeah okay so here's the or, thing right as long as your brain can still differentiate that it's uh fiction which to be fair as as much as like people claim like oh, oh gra like it, it's hard for me to buy those um arguments because of the fact that like people were making those arguments back in the 90s when like the pixel when there's like pixel stuff yeah um, back in the 80s too like it's like oh does that mean i'm a boomer now <laughs> yeah well you know it's like it's like oh wow mortal Kombat's gonna you know, and it's like, oh, there's like well, like two pixels of blood that come out. And it's like, so it's hard for me to, it's like, yeah, I'll look at a new Mortal Kombat game now and I'll be like, oh, that's a little sketchy. Yeah. Like, that's, like, I like it, but it's like, oh, wow, that is like brutal. That hurts to watch. <laughs> but like, it, you know, it's like, it's hard for me to buy. Like, I can still tell it's fiction. I feel like as long as the brain can still tell it's fiction, it, like, it's should be fine. As far as we know, obviously, like there's more and more research you can do as like it passes by. But you know, we're pretty clear on the video games not like causing violence. At most, it seems to 
cause us like a short increase of aggression when it comes to aggressive games. Yeah. And I would be willing to bet that a large part of that is that uh, frustration over like getting your ass kicked in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's just competition. Yeah, that's just like competition one on one. Yeah, there's probably <laughs> some feed forward loops there with some minimal impact, like um, like you're playing something violent and you're also frustrated, like you said, and then those two right. feed into each other. Yeah, I feel like that probably because that's what um when when it, like I'd had to look into the exact study. Um, but like I saw, like I looked into like a couple of the abstracts cause I don't have access to my college's, uh, researching anymore. So I can't actually look in, into the full studies anymore. Yeah. But, um, I, I guess, you know, if you don't go there for over a year, they just, uh, they cut you out of the free research, bunch of assholes. Uh. Um, but the idea was that uh, it did cause like a short increase of aggression, but like it didn't, it didn't have any impact like long-term. Yeah. And I expect like, that in aggression uh, helps with performance in the in the game. Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know. From personal experience, I'd say like it depends. Oh yeah, yeah. It could go either way. Uh, I don't know. There's yeah. I mean, it depends on how much you're like. Because if you're really pissed off, I mean, they could throw off your game completely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And maybe it's unfair for me to say because I'm going off a of personal experience, but you know, I'm, as a lifelong gamer, I feel like I have expertise in the area. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Huh. But um, what was, what was, oh yeah, okay, yeah. So the point of like, you know, I think I think there definitely had to be an age limit at least for those type of things. Like, well, do you, do you think um witnessing an event in VR that's as realistic as real life, like a traumatic event? Do you think that could cause lifelong trauma or, you know, sure. It, PTSD? If, if it does actually get to the point where it's as realistic, then sure. Mm. Like if your brain can't tell the difference, then like. Yeah, I don't. I don't see a reasonable argument for yeah. it being like you're not affected the same way. Like, I mean, I guess you wouldn't be affected the same way in the sense, like, obviously, like I said, there's a difference between in person versus like not in person. Yeah, there versus not. So, like, yeah, I'm sure there's probably some differences there in terms of because you know, you know, obviously, like you're not smelling, you know, you're not like whatever. But even then, like whatever. But um, but uh. I don't, I don't, like, if your brain really actually can't tell the difference, then I don't know what the... So, um, yeah, my, my most recent acid trips, um, uh, I, I, there were definitely times when I felt like I was either, like, in an, in another layer of reality, like, um, uh, most recently I put on my VR headset and I don't remember taking it off, and then there was this transition to where, where, um, I felt like I was in VR, VR with no way to escape. So if, if, um, well, that doesn't really relate to what I was going to say, which was that, um, yeah, th there could be scenarios where, where, um, uh, the VR is so invasive that, that, uh, that you could accidentally, um, uh, assume that you're actually in VR when you're not. And then that, that could cause some trauma. Like, like I think the holy grail of VR is 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 the Sword Art Online version where it just sends signals to your brain and you're in it and you feel everything and you know you experience everything. Hopefully, don't. Yeah. Hopefully, we won't get to a scenario where we die. Um, yeah, in the game. You in die the game. Really. Yeah. <laughs> what well, what is that off of? I could I could see that being actually possible te technologically, and I could also see certain people. Signing up for that just for the thrill of it being for real. I can see people doing that. Whether or not that's going to be legal is another question. Oh, okay, that's what. Sorry, I was like, I, I was listening, but I was looking at the "If you die in the game, you die for real." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's from a Game Grumps quote, but apparently it's from a movie. It's from a 2006 movie, a horror movie. So, so this predates uh, Sword Art Online. I guess yeah. you've seen Sword Art Online, right. right? I know of its existence. I know like vaguely what it is. I've never actually seen it. Oh, okay, well that that's the game that really got me interested in VR, or that's the show that really got me interested in VR and MMOs. Uh, so that's had a huge impact on my life. <laughs> that TV show, <laughs> because uh, uh, you know how much. Okay, so how much anime have you seen? Not a lot. Maybe ten, ten to fifteen shows. I've seen. Uh, Attack on Titan. Sorry, go ahead. 
we could uh maybe we could do an anime episode sometime in the future we could um yeah and i'd be willing to watch a short show if it's like a couple dozen hours total like that's that's the thing those are the anime shows that i watch i'm not gonna watch bleach or 12 episodes jojo yeah yeah like as much as i want to but you know i'm gonna be like me and watch like one piece for 600 episodes yeah time is money (laughs) um um yeah, no, no, like I, I guess for that, I would recommend. Uh, have you seen Full Metal Alchemist? Yes. Okay, good, good. The original or Brotherhood? Both. Okay, good, good. All right, my man. All right, we can, we can, <laughs> we can talk about. That. It's um, been a while, so I might have to rewatch that show. Those are, or both of them. Those were both good. You know, I, I have the Blu-ray. Okay, so I have both. I have the DVDs of the ones because they were cheaper than the Blu-rays, and I have the Blu-ray of, like the original series. Yeah. I've been mean to we we watch it. I've been mean to we watch. <laughs> I've been meaning to rewatch it, uh, and I just like because I got stuck watching other like anime. Um, so maybe, maybe at some point, yeah, we could both rewatch the original series, and we could be like, oh, so how does this hold up now that because we both seen the, like the newer one. But yeah, I could, I could, I could, um, I could reasonably say the phrase without it being clickbait that anime changed my life i could i could reasonably so sword art online got me interested in mmos which means while i was in college i started playing guild wars 2 and i met someone in guild wars 2 that lived in california and i was interested in them and we started dating online and i was wanting to visit i well i visited california a few times and i was looking and i started job searching uh here so i could move over here and I got this amazing job at a you know big tech company. Um, of course, we uh, separated before that process happened. But but um, <laughs> but yeah, if it wasn't for Sword Online, Sword Art Online, I wouldn't be working where I work currently. Nice. It's weird. But yeah, it's a good show. It's um. Okay, so. Do you, you know, let's just save that for the next one thing. We if we do an anime list. episode, you want you want to watch Sword Art Online, and then uh, and then uh, you tell me a show to watch, and I'll watch that one. Yeah. Um, okay. So I have a few. Like obviously, uh, as you saw in the anime or your weave chat or whatever, <laughs> do buy anime for a bit. Um. I'll have to I'll have to look and get back to that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So like, uh, I, th- I think I don't know. I think we're probably good in terms of wrapping it up. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I think we covered know. most of the animal stuff. Which animals? We didn't cover like which specific species are probably closest to humans, but I think I think we we kind of know roughly what those are, right? Like dolphins, octopus. Uh, yeah. Egg. Uh, elephants was one that was like listed. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, to, I guess to cap it off in terms of like, so then I could delete this because there was the ethics on like which one, on the uh, eating. Like, do you see a different like, like say like, well, I guess because we eat pork, but then it's like the yeah. the intelligence thing, and then there's also I guess the fact of like, oh, you know, which one of these are healthier for us, right? Like, for example, chicken's gonna be a bit healthier than uh, than, like bacon, obviously. Yeah. Uh, as far as health goes, I, I just I, like lately I've been just trying to get some lean meats when I can, and then every now and then I can have non-lean meats. So that's that's my approach to the health. So I don't really have any specific um, concerns there. Um, I probably wouldn't need anything with cyanide. <laughs> well, I mean, um, but um, uh, but let, let's see. Um, as far as uh, ethics. I don't know where I stand on that. So I'm still trying to work through layers of cognitive dissonance and biases and all kinds of stuff. So I'll get back to you on that in a few months or years. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as other reasons that are um, pushing me away from certain types of animals, would it would be environmental reasons. And the obvious example is uh, cows. Right. So I'm trying my very best to eat less beef because of its huge environmental impact, uh, because I think that's an easy way. If we transition away from beef as a planet, then I think that's a that's going to be huge, you know, progress towards being carbon negative. 
Yeah, I try to, uh, for like more of the health reasons side of it, I try to eat more chicken than I do beef. Mm, yeah, yeah. I wanna, like, I don't, uh, Cause... Like, you know, I don't think, like super hard to that rule. And then even then, like, I'll try to, like, say, I'll try to go mushrooms, like mushroom type burgers, as opposed to, yeah. Uh, or like, say, like, a, I don't know, like, I'm the type of dude that'd be like, oh, I'll get the impossible whopper, right? Like, yep. if I ever go with like, Burger King or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Not a, there was like a Sour King that came out, a Sour No King that came out like recently. So I got to that. I was like, hell yeah. So Taco <laughs> Bell and, 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 uh, uh, McDonald's are both, uh, and Burger King, I think, well, Burger King already has something, but Taco yeah. Bell and McDonald's are talking to, uh, Beyond Meat right now. So yeah. they have plans to roll out artificial meats there. When it comes to stuff like that, I'd be willing to, as long as it's like, it's, like I, I know some people's tolerance of it is higher than mine. Yeah. Like in the sense that they would like it needs to taste exactly, but like I don't know, like if it tastes close enough, like whatever. Yeah. For me, tolerance is lower. <laughs> you can tell uh, the Impossible Whopper isn't like beef, but like it, it still tastes pretty close to it. Yeah. Likewise, you know, when it comes to say, uh, portobello mushrooms, yeah, like you can tell it's not beef, but like it still has like a pretty close taste. Like it just doesn't have that like kind of as much meaty aftertaste. But yeah. It's, yeah. Like, yeah, like it, if if that's the only difference, like that's such a minor thing to like make a much better impact. Like if you keep going for that, then yeah. I'm just like, yeah, why not? Like who cares? Yeah, I, I can't think of any food that I don't like, so I'm not very picky at all. Um, so yeah, it it, it doesn't make much of a difference to me. I I think if I want a classic meat taste, then yeah, I think like if I'm if I really want a steak, then I don't think you know Beyond Burger. Or, or yeah. impossible burger will do it, but you know, eventually it will. Eventually. Yeah. To see, I'm not even keeping an eye out for that. Well, we should probably wrap this one up. I guess. Okay. One thing before we do it though, um, uh, vegetarianism ah. versus veganism. Um, are you one that would be like, I'll just stop at like vegetarianism? Because I feel like a for me, I don't know. Like, I can't. I, I don't see myself giving up like cheese or eggs or anything. Yeah, I I think it's gonna be a. I think for now, I'm 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 just going to um, adjust my because I don't know how I stand on the ethics completely yet. Um, I'm gonna go off of my uh, assessment of the environmental impact, so I'm gonna stay away from stuff from high environmental impact. I think eggs are pretty low, cheese might be pretty high but there's vegan cheeses that i could try um i i don't know have you tried any of those like vegan cheeses or the uh, vegan like the almond milk or anything um i've tried a few um i think there's like there's a few things that i didn't like but but um i don't know i i, I don't I, I think veganism is very impractical especially if you stick to every single rule like the gelatin and candy has animal products in it. Yeah, see, I would never, um, I just don't care enough about animals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I definitely don't see myself ever being like that. I'm just, I'm just more concerned about, you know, can we, can we reduce the, the supply chain somehow? Like, do we really have to ship meat several hundred miles or something? Or, or could we maybe grow it locally? Like have a, every a town has salt. a lab grown meat facility or something yeah or every home even oh boy going like the uh like the stereotypical 1950s like futuristic houses where it's like <laughs> yeah you hit this button and it brings out the entire thing yeah well 3d printers are definitely oh, successful so i think i think a, a lab grown meat machine would be similar to a 3d printer like you'd have you'd have an area where the culture grows Hopefully automated, maybe not automated. You can't 3D print food, can you? You can. Um, yep. uh, people 3D print cookies and, and uh, pancakes. Um, really? Well, they, they 3D what? print the batter and then and then bake it. But you could you could That's streamline cool. that process. And <laughs> um, really cool. and there is 3D printed meat already. Um, some companies are working on that. So there's definitely 3D printed meat already, but they're not at the point where they can print a steak. But that's the ultimate goal. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, to be fair, I, I'm not a steak fan, so. Yeah. 
but um, mm-hmm. ground beef is really easy to simulate with with uh, plants and with lab grown. But yeah, well, I suppose that's the, uh, that's the we finally got to the the discussion. Who? Yep. The uh, with the animals and it's, such. It was the first thing in my uh, list of notes. Okay. Well, here, here's the here's the real question that I'm off on. You know, since we're talking about you know which animals will we eat or not eat, what about the the most enticing animal of all women? Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the video there. 